So the trusses are being delivered today and here they come. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, the wind is kind of blowing a little bit. We got Jared out here today. Remember how famous Jared got on the last kind of video? Deal. <laughs> he has many leather bound books. Yes. I'll let you film from this side so I don't bend over because then people think I'm here to do the plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what exactly are you doing there? I'm actually making a... Uh, some boxes that are going to go for the top, you know, the bottom sill plate that went around. Yeah. It's like the, the box beam thing. Yeah. It's going to go across the top and then Brian, you guys are going to ratchet these bales together from the top frame and the bottom frame, the strap that goes underneath. You can kind of see yeah. one a little up and over and then this will be used to kind of like pull everything toy. Is that like a tiger toy? <laughs> Is that the little one? The little box beam? I mean, these are all different sizes. Some of them are, that's probably the smallest one. That's one ah! foot, 11 inches. There's a there. big rock over here and I'm tripping on it. Oh, that's cute. That's the smallest one. And the longest one's eight foot, but there's a bunch of sizes in between. So it all. Oh, um, that little one gives me an idea for a, like a picture frame or something. A litter box. I said, I'm going to take a, <laughs> a litter box. I'm going to go to the bathroom before I leave. I'm going to leave you guys a little present in there. <laughs> Great. In that little box. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go see what Brian's doing. Yep. Thanks for helping, Jerry. Of course. Of course. Of course. Really He's such a good friend. Um, all right. I'm going to try not. I've, I've got on my sandals again, so. Where are you, Brian? Where? I'm filming. This is the last one, actually. <gasps> Yay! Well, you don't even know what I'm doing now, do you? Uh, I think you're putting up uh, the cripple studs. Correct. Holy cow, can you believe I remembered that? Because when the box beam crosses over the box, it will actually rest on these. Yeah, so well, that's what the box beam is going to go on top of. Well, when it goes over the box, yeah. Yeah. All right. Even Ooh. though I've made sure that every time I cross a buck, the box beam is unbroken. You know what I mean? It's one piece right. across the bucks uh -huh. so that there won't be any any uh, fragile places. No joints, so hopefully no give. No give. So yeah, over the buck, it's one piece, but it's connected in other places. It's very exciting. I'm very excited. All right. I keep tripping, so it's like all shaky and stuff. Shake and bake. Okay, guys. So did a little bit of work yesterday. So let me catch you up. It was nothing super exciting. Uh, Pam got a little footage of it, but not much. Like I said, it was, it was kind of just some tedious work. Um, my buddy Jared came by and helped me out a little bit with it. He did a bunch of wood cutting. Uh, what I did was I put these, uh, cripple studs over the window frames. Uh, there's cripples under, there are the cripples over. Those are new. So the reason we didn't put those on when we made the window bucks originally is because we didn't know what we would, what height we would cut down the bucks to when we wanted to squeeze the bales down. But, uh, I have, so I figured I'd just wait and make them the height that I wanted them to be before I, you know, make them the height that the bucks were going to be cut down to. Um, the bucks were at eight feet. Well, since we've done the bales, I've decided I'm going to leave the bucks at eight feet because that's what I'm going to squeeze down to because my bales are just a little bit taller than eight feet right now. So we're going to squeeze them down to eight feet. So I filled in with the uh, cripple studs over all the doors and windows, doors and window frames um, to the height of eight feet. So that's what we did. 
Um, they're just kind of hanging there. They don't, you know, they're, some of them are a little wobbly right now or whatever, but I mean, as we put the box beam on top and bring it down, we can actually kind of put those into place where we want them and then we'll attach the box beam to them. Um, and the box beam, of course, will be, everything will be strapped, right? There'll be strapping that goes under the bottom and over the top to squeeze the bales down. So technically they wouldn't even really have to be attached to anything here, but I mean, I'll probably attach to those, to those just to keep everything in place. So that was one of the things we did yesterday. The other thing, mostly Jared and I finished it up uh, after I got done with this stuff. He cut me all this wood and I started putting it up there. And then he went on and cut more wood and put them together as little boxes that I've got over here that are gonna make up our box beam. So we're making it in pieces. So if you saw our video on our sill plate, which is the bottom of our walls, um, this is very similar and it's gonna be on the top. Uh, so what we're doing is we've got a bunch of a bunch of just two by four, you know, two by fours on edge, two by fours on edge. There, uh, it's a little shady. And uh, so we just make a box structure, and there they can be. These ones are eight footers. Um, ultimately, this piece of plywood is just sitting here. Ultimately, they'll have plywood. Each have plywood on the bottom of them, and they will all those boxes. We'll put them up on top of the bales in a certain configuration, you know, that I've figured out um, where I want things and what sizes I want where. But the idea is that they'll they'll be on top of the whole uh, set of bale walls so that we can, and we'll actually connect each of them at their ends so that they act like one. And they will have plywood on the bottom of them so that when we squeeze them down with the strapping that we're going to put under the bottom and over the top, when we squeeze them down, they will squeeze the bales. So these are the boxes that are going to do that. They'll actually, along the way, have some, some cross members from side to side in place as well. But I haven't put those in yet. I'm going to do that right in place because I want them to fall in certain spots. So, so Jared made most of these boxes yesterday. I finished up a couple when I got done doing the, the cripples over there. But the reason these boxes are different sizes is because... You know, I say that, that I'm going to place these boxes all along the wall here, the top of the wall. Well, there's a couple things going on there. Number one, when you, when you put all those up there and you connect them at their ends, they really, you know, every time you connect one is a little bit of a weak spot, right? That's a, every time there's a joint, it's a little bit weak. So, um, what we want to, what we want to avoid is having one of those joints a box end and another box start over top of any of these bucks, right? Because they're sort of, I mean, on the outside edge of the wall, they're sitting on these cripple studs, but on the inside edge of the wall, there's nothing. So if I get under here and just look straight up, when the box runs from that edge to that edge, it's just kind of free air. So every time I cross a, a buck, I want to make sure that that portion of the box beam is one solid portion, right? I don't, I don't want to have a break in there. So I made all the bucks. I drew it all up in, in SketchUp to make sure that bucks would always cross, or I'm sorry, um, the box beam would always have a solid section crossing every one of these uh, bucks. Now, when they're over the bales, I can have breaks. And yes, it's still kind of a, the joint is a weak point, but the way I'm going to place the, the uh, plywood, which is why the plywood isn't on yet, is that I'm going to offset the plywood from box to box so that even though there's a joint in the pieces of the box beam, uh, when I transition from one box to another box within the box beam, I'm going to let plywood on the bottom span that joint to strengthen it. And also, this thing doesn't really have to act kind of like a bridge. It won't be in free air. It'll be on top of these, these uh, bales. So when you pull it down, you know, it'll, we're going to pull it down even. It'll, it'll want to, you know, it'll, like I said, where those joints are, it'll give a little bit. But we're going to pull everything down even. So it should do its job. It's very similar, like I said, to what we did on the sill plate. It's just on the sill plate, we were setting it on the ground, air quotes, I mean, we were setting it on top of tires. So it's just kind of the same idea. Um, the difference between the ground and up there is up here, we do have to span across these, these bucks. Whereas on the ground, there was never any, 
you know, dead space underneath the sill plate, right? So up here, there is dead space underneath the box beam. And so we want to make sure that that box beam is solid when we span that dead space. So uh, that's the plan. Uh, that's what I'm going to start working on today. And I'm going to take these pieces that we've put together. We've cut all of the, we've cut and assembled all of the box pieces. I've cut a bunch of strips of plywood and uh, all that's left is to start throwing those boxes up there in the order that I've kind of drawn them on SketchUp to make sure that things fall where I want them to fall. And then I'm gonna start putting the, the plywood underneath them. I'll have to cut some of the plywood again to make joints fall where I want them to fall. And I'll cut a bunch of little cross members to go you know, side to side inside that box to give it a little more stability. And also I'll want those members to land at certain spots. So I drew that all up in SketchUp. So that's why, again, those aren't attached yet. For right now, those boxes are just the outer edge. They're not the, the inner supports, uh, the little cross members, almost rungs, if you want to think of that as a, as a ladder. So uh, that's what I'm working on today. Let's give it a go. Okay, y'all. So I've got them all laid out on the ground. Let me try and throw them up on top to give you an idea what I'm talking about. Hopefully if it wasn't clear, it'll become clear. I should have mentioned, by the way, that uh, this, the idea behind this little setup here is this is a, a mirror on top of the sill plate on the bottom. You know, it's the same dimensions, same square, everything. So, you know, makes sense. The roof and the ceiling should be the same, or the, the roof and the ceiling. You're doing awesome. The bottom and the top. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, let me throw these up here. Okay, so I've placed the box beam pieces, you see at the top, along one side here. Uh, again, you know, you can see it kind of doing this. So what I'm gonna do is every one, everywhere one of those boxes kind of meets up with another box, I'm gonna actually connect them at their ends. So this will become much straighter, right? It won't, it won't do as much of this. And I'm gonna put plywood, call it sheathing, let's say, underneath this whole thing all along here. So that's gonna, that's gonna make it much more rigid. So it'll become more like one solid board. Not exactly, but much better, right? So, so imagine that thing is pretty solid and straight now. Then the next step is to take the straps that I've already put under the sill plate, wrap them up over the top, and little by little ratchet them down. And I just start pulling this whole thing down little by little, and I'll have to do it in pieces, right? Because I don't want it to get all crazy out of whack, but but the idea is it pulls each of these little sections of bales down, it squeezes them all. And eventually it squeezes them to the point where the box beam actually lands on top of each of the pieces of wood of the buck and the, the cripple studs and the king studs from the buck, right? So, so that's the idea, the whole thing comes down. So, it is, so when I'm done, it is, sitting on, it is sitting on top of either bales that have been compressed, so they're pretty darn solid, right? So they're giving good support or it's sitting on a two by four that is either a king stud or a cripple stud that's over a header of a door or a window. So much like standard framing there. So it's a combination of bales and studs. It's a bale and stud wall. But uh, so that's it. So the reason I made the box, the pieces the way I did is so that they'll fit certain ways so that I never have a, a joint. You see a joint right there. I never want a joint over the over the free air of the, of the uh, buck, okay? At least on the inner edge of the buck, right? On the outer edge of the buck, there's these studs, but on the inner edge of the buck, there is not. So, but all the way to the roof is gonna be on the outer edge anyway, so that's okay. Kind of just like a standard wall. Imagine this was a standard framed wall. All that weight is over those studs. So, anyway, so it looks, it doesn't look real pretty right now, but I just wanted to put them in place and I made them, you know, I'll show a quick, at least picture of my uh, SketchUp drawing to show how I drew this all out to know what size these needed to be and where I wanted to place them. And I did the same thing with the pieces of plywood that are gonna go underneath them, again, so that they're offset, so that the plywood spans the joints between the two by fours. And all of the cross members that I'm gonna place inside those little boxes, I'm gonna have cross members from side to side. I've placed all those specifically so that they'll land, so that the two pieces of plywood that meet underneath will meet at a, at a cross member so that plywood won't be able to, 
to move or flex when it comes down on the uh, bales, let's say. So hopefully all that makes sense. We'll get shots of this as we're going, but that's just our first kind of throwing the, the box beam up there in pieces. The rest of it has to be done kind of in place. I'm gonna slide the plywood pieces underneath them, uh, attach them from the bottom side. I only have to attach them at the outer edges really, so I, it shouldn't be a big problem uh, to attach them, even though it's already sitting on the wall and I have to come from the bottom. Uh, and then I'll put all those cross member pieces in and they get screwed in from the side. So I should be able to do all this kind of up on the wall. So after I place all these pieces up on top of the wall, the rest of the work of building the box beam is done in place. So cross your fingers. Okay, here goes putting the box beam pieces up on wall number two. Two down. So the other thing worth noting here, which may or may not be obvious as you see me putting these up is, you know, they're not making a real pretty straight line yet or anything. And, and even after I, so after I attach them all together and put the plywood under them, like I said, they'll become much more solid, kind of like a single piece, even though not exactly, but much closer to a single piece of wood. Um, there will be a lot of variation along the wall, right? Of in and out and from the bales. You can see, I think you can see from here that things are moving a little bit. So of course that's not a nice pretty edge right along there. So what has to happen basically is once I start to pull this, once I start to crank this thing down and pull it tight, when it gets just a little bit of tension on it, I have to start making adjustments to the wall to get everything plumb. I'll be making lots of measurements to make things plumb. Lots of measurements from, from across the box beam, across the top of the, the whole structure to make sure measurements line up so that everything is square and straight and, and all of that. So there will be a lot of little adjustments as I'm trying to tighten this, as I'm trying to squeeze this thing down because these walls are not perfect right now. Um, and they don't even have to be perfect, but they have to be darn close. And the corners especially should be pretty good. But um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that, you know, things are a little, a little wonky right now. This is actually the worst wall because it's the longest stretch of bales without something else like these bucks in place. These walls here shouldn't be as bad. If you look down this side, you know, you can see it's actually not quite as bad. It looks pretty nice and straight down that line. But down this line, I can see it with my eyes. I hope you can see it on the camera that there's a little bit of this going on. But that wall can be pushed a little either way. Each bale can be pushed a little bit either way. Um, but you can't do that until you start to tighten it down. So, but there will be, just to show, there will be a lot of that going on along the way as we tighten this thing down. All right, let's try these other two walls. That's three. Hopefully it's starting to come together for you if it wasn't obvious before. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go for one more. And voila. All right, guys, this is about to be a real tedious process. Uh, I just want to give you a look at this. Hopefully you can get a feel because I can see it from here, but I'm not sure how it's coming through on the camera. But you see how everything's kind of all wavy and wonky. The stuff's just sitting there right now. But I'm hopefully going to show you kind of an after. And I'll show you some of the work going into it. But like I said, there's going to be a lot of slow work here. Um, to put in step one will be to put in kind of cross braces inside these little boxes. I will also attach the boxes to each other and hopefully that'll firm up everything pretty good. And then I'm gonna put a layer of plywood, a thin sheet of plywood underneath the whole thing. And hopefully that turns this, what you see kind of wavy box beam right now and kind of all over the map box beam, turns it into a really nice strong solid piece that of course then I'll have to squeeze down on the wall and there'll be a bunch of adjustments to be made when I squeeze it down. But I just wanna get a look. When I was looking across this, I was seeing kind of how everything's all over the place. And I hope the after will show what a difference, uh, how it's nice and solid, hopefully. So we'll check back in a little bit. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing or sharing with a friend.
and click the bell notification so you never miss any of our videos. We really appreciate every view and comment. And if you're looking for other ways to support us, please check out the links in the description box. See you in the, the next, next video. video.